So where are the workers? Perhaps it's a generational divide keeping them away. Or is there more of a hidden message here that everyone is missing? Let's ask Connor Blakely now. He's being called a Gen Z thought leader. He's an entrepreneur who helps Fortune 500 companies attract Gen Z. Connor, thanks so much for being here. Natasha, thanks so much for having me. You know, Connor, so let's start with the cushy job perks that older generations love to roll their eyes at. The free food, the baristas, the dry cleaning. Are they really what will sway Gen Z to take jobs? Listen, I'm certainly not complaining uh, about anyone bringing their dog to work or new baristas, right? But most of these things do not move the needle at all and are literally a Band-Aid on a bullet hole. Um, so, yeah, like Gen Z is one of the most entrepreneurial generations that have ever come into existence, right? We've had access to this technology since we've been literally super, super young. Um, I think during COVID, we had a lot of time to really figure out some of the lies that we've been told our entire lives. Yeah, some of the lies you've been told, Connor, I want to pick up on that. You know, critics say this new generation is soft and entitled. They expect too much. I mean, Connor, I do not envy what your generation is dealing with in terms of hate. Um, but is it that Gen Z is spoiled or is it that Gen Z sees through these so-called perks and maybe gourmet meals and unlimited snacks and spas are just designed to keep workers at their desks and eliminate the need for them to go home at all? Listen, I think that makes sense. There's truth to uh, to some of those things for sure. Um, they can say that about us, but I think a lot of Gen Z might feel that they're old and slow, right? <laughs> we bring a completely new skill set into the workplace that really we, we haven't seen this in history too much. I think more than anything, Gen Z just craves a seat at the table. Um, it lends itself to a lot of different opportunities for reverse mentorship um, to really like have business impact and get things done. Well, and Connor, you know, for boomers and Gen X, uh, climbing the corporate ladder was such a priority. You mentioned Gen Z was so entrepreneurial. How are Gen Zers paying the bills um, if the steady paycheck is not really what's all important anymore? Yeah, oftentimes I, I feel like so many people, especially at brands, look at this data and it totally gets misconstrued. I think a perfect example of this is literally my girlfriend. She's someone who has a TikTok account, has a super dedicated small following and she makes a few grand a month just selling jewelry and doing ads on the platform but she has a college degree right she has job offers people are hitting her up all the time but she's making more than she'd make at her current job through side hustles and just being more selective i feel like if anything, all this technology and especially all this time has allowed us to zoom out, get some perspective and take a holistic approach before we're diving into the workplace when we're still trying to all figure out who we are, right? We just have a very unique skill set. Um, and I think that all the employers that find a way to tap into the entrepreneurial spirit of Gen Z and that skill set are just the companies and brands that are gonna win. All right, Connor Blakely, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Natasha. I do want to turn it now to Alexandra Von Tiergarten, a senior regional vice president for the staffing and recruiting firm Robert Half, and Kate Duchesne, chief executive officer at the consulting firm RGP. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So, Alexandra, let's start with you. You know, you started your career helping recruit top talent. Do you think more work perks are what potential hires are waiting for? Well, I have never seen a more robust job market. It is exciting and it continues to be exciting. And as you mentioned, the job numbers that came out today are incredible. So what we are seeing and what I'm seeing overall in the market is that it continues to be about what is the salary that it's going to be offered? Is the employer offering flexibility? Is there a signing bonus? Uh, but the perks are starting to buy in as well. So we are starting to see some interesting things on the East Coast and some interesting things on the West Coast. I don't know, to Connor's point, if they're really going to tip the needle, because I really still feel getting more money to pay for things um, makes a big difference. But you have to look at, you know, this generation right now that has started, you know, working at home and in the lockdown, and now we're making them go back into an office. Some of these perks are just to replace the extra money that they have to spend going into an office every day. I hear you. And I mean, Kate, some of the benefits that we've been talking about, some of these perks are expensive. Are we going to see the bubble burst on this? Is that even sustainable for companies? 
Yeah, hi, Natasha, and thanks for having me, too. I think these perks are chasing talent in ways that are not sustainable and actually will backfire. I, they really are fringe benefits. They're called fringe benefits for a reason. I think what's more important in today's environment to solve this problem of the great alignment is to really understand what this demographic of talent wants. And what we're seeing both in our client base and in our talent base is that talent wants flexibility, they want transparency, they want choice, and they want to work with purpose. And if you can deliver that, it doesn't matter what your cafeteria is serving during the day. It's really the fundamental relationship between employer and employee that matters today. Well, and Kate, I want to stay with you for a moment because you said something before that's really interesting, which is that there's a part of this story uh, that isn't being talked about, and it has to do with female workers. What is everyone missing when it comes to that? Well, female workers were disproportionately impacted by the global pandemic. Um, whether we like it or not, the bulk of both child care and elder care still fall to women. And so the, the last two years have been really difficult for that population, and therefore they have tended to fall out of the workforce. I think the firms, like Connor said, that are going to win are those that are going to bring more flexibility and understanding and allow people self-determination. I mean, I've been a working mom my whole career. I raised two, now they're millennials. I know what it's like to balance work and family, have a big job and still want to have a fulfilling family life. And employers need to understand that. So giving workers the ability to determine when, where, and how they work and measure outcomes not yeah. input. Is and Kate, what Kate, I absolutely hear you on that. And I want to bring Alexandra in here. I mean, what does a perk even look like in a remote world? And also, you talked about the forced return to office. Uh, are we are we going to see that keep people from the workforce uh, potentially? Well, there are all sorts of perks, right? We're seeing these outrageous ones that you've discussed, like the houses in the Hamptons, but we're also seeing ones, I'm a working mother as well. I have two young children and a perk is that, you know, maybe you go into the office three days a week, um, you work from home the other two, but even on those in office days, you don't have to be there the whole day. You know, maybe you're there from 10 to 4, or maybe you come in early and you do still have to go to the preschool class and read the book, because that's what the workforce wants. They want that same flexibility to finish their work just as they were able to do when they were home completely remote. Um, and, you know, they'll go into the office a little bit. That's OK. But they want that flexibility when something comes up that they want to do, that they can do it. I have teams of mine that go to a hot yoga class um, one day a week together at two o'clock in the afternoon. That would never have happened pre-pandemic. I hear you, but and I mean, to your point thing. as well, and sorry to interrupt, but I mean, measure, I think both of you were making the point, measuring the productivity, measuring the actual output and the projects that you're able to deliver, not someone standing there with a stopwatch and saying, are you in at this time and what time do you leave your desk? I wish we had more time to talk about this. Alexand Alexandra Don Von Tiergarten, excuse me, and Kate yeah. Dush Shane, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.